Hello and welcome. My name is Darren Bell. I uh, work at Treasure Valley Community College as a business instructor and one of the courses that I teach is personal finance. So I work with high school instructors to, um, to be able to offer the personal finance course to high school students as a dual credit course. And so I'm doing this presentation here. It's uh, November 2019 and I'm going to do this presentation to hopefully give some of the uh, instructors at the high schools some um, information to be that will be useful to them as they proceed in their course for dual credit. So uh, to begin with, let's go ahead and talk about four things to consider when we're offering this dual credit course. So the first thing is the scope of the course. Right? That basically means what are the topics that we're going to cover in the course and, what, and, and do you, does your scope for your course have to match exactly the scope for the college course. Uh, the next thing is the duration of the course, right? So um, we'll talk about that and how that matches up with the college course as well. The depth of the course, meaning, uh, you know, if I cover all the same topics that you do, uh, how deep do I have to go, right? On some of the things, do I just have to know vocabulary or uh, maybe a little deeper? Uh, into actual hands-on doing, right? And then finally, the last thing to consider is the final project. And the final project is something that, that I use in my personal finance course as uh, a, uh, an assessment, a final assessment, a final tool to be able to know that the, the student has collected everything that they need to go forward and to uh, use personal finance uh, good personal finance uh, skills and strategies for hopefully the rest of, the, of their life if they use their final project going forward uh, beyond the class. So to begin with, the scope of the course. So this, this, these bullet points basically outline the scope of the course for us. So we've got personal financial management um, planning in action. Okay, so well, that's one of the things that we cover throughout many chapters is we cover a topic and then we say, how does this work in your personal financial plan? Uh, number, number two down there is money management skills and tools. So there, that's something that we cover. Um, and of course, it's going to be things like budgeting. It's going to be understanding how to track expenses and income. It's going to be doing things on how we save, right? How we're going to save for the future. And then um, we also, in, in, in the course that I use, we actually, the book that I actually have, one of the books that I have my students read is the Total Money Makeover uh, book by Dave Ramsey. And we talk about some of his skills and, and tools that he uses. And, and, but we don't necessarily use that as the only set of skills, strategies, and tools that are available out there, right? So we kind of expand beyond that. And the next one down, net worth, personal financial calculations. This includes time value of money and ratios. Um, we're also talking about debt avoidance and elimination and just financial services in general. Um, I have a banker come into our class and they, they, uh, they're always uh, interesting for the students to, to have them talk to a banker. I have my students go and visit a bank or a financial institution and meet people there. Um, not that I want my students to get into debt, but I just want them to be savvy and to be able to be comfortable to, and know how to talk to bankers and, and different financial institutions about their personal finance. So we also talk about consumer purchasing. Um, that's going to be anything from uh, simple purchases like um, something at at Walmart, right? That they want to save up and buy for all and online purchasing, all the way up to buying a car, right? That's probably one of the biggest like consumer purchases that that um, somebody's going to make. This isn't including buying a house or real estate, right? And so we're just talking about maybe up to buying a car. 
Uh, I have my students go to a car lot. I have them talk to um, a salesman. I have let my students know, hey, let the student let or let the car salesman know up front what you're doing. That way there, there's no false expectations or rep misrepresentations about what you're doing and what why you're at their car lot. And allow them to educate you. Sometimes they'll, they'll spend a lot of time and effort to help you. Uh, sometimes not as much. But um, that's just an experience that I like my students to have is to go to that car lot and meet the salesman. Um, and I tell them, do not buy a car off of this assignment, right? That's not the purpose of it. <laughs> I've only had one student do that. And, but they were already, I guess, in the market to buy a car, but that's not the purpose. The purpose is education, uh, giving them an experience to kind of go with there. Um, and to build, all these things are to help them build uh, a personal financial plan. And so we talk about also selecting and financing housing, talk about renting and uh, buying a home and the strategies there. We talk about insurance, um, all sorts of insurance plans, right? We talk about investing in your financial plan. Uh, and then we kind of roll over, a lot of times this is closely related with retirement and estate planning. Not always the same thing though. Okay, so next, duration of the course. So the duration of the course for a TVCC course is gonna be 11 weeks. That includes final finals week. Um, this is all done within 11 weeks and completed, right? So for you in the high school, you may have a different timeline for your course. It may be a year-long year course, whatever it is. Um, one of the guidelines that I like to give is, is I like to have this done within the same academic year. So if, if you have your students take personal finance their junior year or whenever, um, I like to have it done within that academic year. So not necessarily to start it in one year and finish it another, right? So we want it to have it done. That makes things easier just to be able to build the plan that'll be our final project. And we'll talk about that. So the depth of the course, right? So uh, the, the, the important part of this is um, as you cover a topic, it's important to give the student something to do, to show their understanding, to have them understand what you're talking about. Um, so whatever that is, I'll leave that up to you, whether it's um, an, a multiple choice exam or whether it's an in-person activity, right? Um, or, or writing down, um, maybe doing a response paper or journaling. Whatever your assessment is, to be able to get the depth and to be able to know that students understand certain things. Um, I'd refer you also to the syllabus. So I'm gonna include the syllabus and make sure everybody has access to the syllabus. The syllabus will have the learning outcomes as well in there, right? And that's really what we want the, those course outcomes to be assessed in some way. So one of the biggest, biggest assessments is gonna be the final project. So on the final project, what it is, and, I, and there's an outline that I'll supply you as well that I, that I work with, with my students is, um, it's gonna be all previous course, coursework, right, that you're gonna be doing. There shouldn't be any wasted assignments, right? Um, not that there ever is, but every assignment your student does, sh you, they should be able to roll it into their final uh, personal finance plan um, and use it. This is the takeaway from the course, right? This is gonna be the main graded assignment for the college dual credit course. And this is gonna be something, a tool that the students now can use going forward in their life. Um, and it's gonna, it's gonna be something, uh, just how does it fit into the course? Well, in a couple different ways, right? One, you're definitely gonna to wanna to have at least one draft one draft in between, right, from the start of the course to the end of the course, you're gonna have that, you're gonna wanna have one. You can have multiple drafts, but I, I, I'd say to have at least one draft and pick where you want, um, to kind of which chunk you want the students to add to their personal financial planning, right? Because as you do drafts, it's gonna be a work in process. It, it may not be complete with all the sections, but it's gonna be up to where you've covered so far in the course 
and then beyond that, as soon as you get a draft, one of the important things is to read the draft, to look at it in, in, in a critical way to say, how could this be better? What are they missing something on the scope? That's important. They have to have the scope of the draft. That's, a, that's definitely going to be an important grading part. But also the depth. How can they make this more meaningful and more useful in their life, right? Or the things that we're going to be asking as we grade the drafts. Um, and then to help them continue on, right? To their final project, to the final. Um, it definitely gives them accountability and it allows for you to give some redirection if something's not looking good. And then at the very end, this is where the majority of the points, this is where the majority of the points for your final grade for dual credit should come from, is this uh, final project. I am more than willing um, to read through and talk about some projects with you. If you have projects you want to share with me, I don't require um, the high school instructors or the students to send me their project and have me grade them, right? That's not part, that's not necessarily needed, but I want to be a resource and I want to help you uh, in grading and in giving some redirection if needed, right? And, and some more depth. So I'm more than happy to do that as we go through this. So I'm going to go ahead and follow up th uh, this with some additional links to help you ha make sure you have the syllabus, make sure you have the project outline as well, and instructions and rubric. Thanks, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.